Welcome to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm your host, Shannon Skinner. Well, in this part of the show today, we're going to be talking about how dance and other forms of expressive arts can be used for healing with my guest, Erica Ross, who is the co-founder of Dance Our Way Home. She's also a, a healing dance facilitator and an artist and has some fantastic stories, so you're not going to want to miss this one. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute when I ask my guests for their top tip on living a successful life. You're going to hear Erica's. And I know, Erica, you're going to have a really great tip. I already know it's coming. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's nice to have you here. It's good to be here. Now, you're from Toronto, so you didn't have very far to go to the downtown studio. That's true. Now, while you live in Toronto, there's a place uh, far away that uh, has a, a big part of your heart, and that's India. You've spent a lot of time. You were just there in India recently. Um, it's a place that was magical for you years ago. What's the draw to India? I must know. Who You know, it's, it, it's a mystery to me, really. Um, it could be that I was impacted by a journey that I did when I was 19. Um, unexpectedly, I ended up in India. That's a whole long story how I got there. But um, I didn't know anything about that country. And I was there by myself at 19. It's and brave. It was, it was profound. Um, it was exciting. I got very ill. I discovered ecstasy, just the joy of being by myself. and and um, being an adventurer and I think it just it stayed with me I left very ill I was basically forced to leave so I, I left and um, my dream was to return but life took me in a whole nother direction and I didn't go for a long long time and it wasn't until my daughter left home um, two years ago to go off to university uh, that I realized that it was now my time to return. So after 36 years, at 55, I returned by myself to India, not knowing what I would find, not knowing if I would feel the same connection that I felt back then. You can imagine holding a dream for 36 years. Is it real? Is it fantasy? What's going to happen? And what happened was I, I fell back in love with that country and um, spent two beautiful months there just being with the cows, really allowing myself to just be present and and uh, explore the south. And um, what is it about India so that is know, has such a magical <clears throat> draw to it? There is something incredibly chaotic about that country. <laughs> um, that might be uh, an understatement uh, to some. <laughs> yeah, and I think either you love it or you hate it. Right. Um, for some reason, it resonates with me. I feel more alive. Um, you can't have expectations when you're there, and I think that's a beautiful opportunity <coughs> excuse me, to practice being really present and just going with the flow because nothing happens the way you want it to happen. And I think it's a really, it's a good experience for me who loves to control things and um, have a plan. And then to have life to say no. That's not what's going to happen. You have to be present with the moment and just be there, just show up and, um, and let go. It's also an incredibly beautiful place. There's a sacred energy there. The people are kind and friendly. Um, I love the food. The land is beautiful. It's powerful. There are so many beautiful temples. And because I have a relationship with the divine feminine and goddesses, the goddesses are everywhere. So I feel like. The mother is with me. I see Durga and Kali and Shakti and Saraswati, images of her everywhere. Um, so what, is it a nation that to you that is a, has a very, a lot of feminine energy then? It's very controversial because on one hand, the women aren't necessarily treated very well, but yet they do have um, a devout relationship with the sacred feminine. So I find it really fascinating that you see the images of the divine, the sacred images of female everywhere, and yet women are still not prioritized. So that's a, that's a challenging and um, very sort of polarizing environment. Now, um, you're an artist. Uh, you've, you've, you've been expressing yourself mm. through art for a number of years. Yes, for a long a time. Your art. Well, it all goes back to um, 
um, OCA, which is now OCAD, but it was Ontario College of Art back when I was there in the 70s. Um, I think that really goes back even further because my, I grew up in a family of dancers and artists. My father is an artist, so is my mother. My father was a mime and he's, he was a sculptor, and now he works in oils and oil pastels. My mother uh, was a dancer up until just recently in her mid-70s, um, and also a beautiful craftswoman. Um, so art and dance was part of my life. I grew up in it. It's very um, natural, familiar territory for me. So um, no surprise that I'd be a dancer and artist. So I went to OCA, and then from there I ended up in, in, in sorry, not India. I ended up in, um, in New York um, teaching art. I was an enamelist and a jeweler and did that for many, many years. And then I moved to Philadelphia. I love New York, by the way. Yeah, I love New York, It's one of my very too. favorite places yeah. on the planet. Yeah. You feel like you're in the center of the universe when you're there. That's how it felt for me. So much energy. So much energy, so much creative energy. Mm. Um, I loved it. I loved it. I moved there when I was 24. So you were a jeweler? Mm -hmm. um, enamelist. Um, then I moved back. I was living in Philadelphia, then I moved back to New York, and there I was a clothing designer. I had a boutique in the Lower East Side of New York. Wow. That took, brought me to Bali, which was the closest place I could get to India. So I still hadn't been back to India, always holding that dream. But like I said, I meandered into other locations, ended up in Bali. I felt the energy of Southeast Asia again. It felt like home. I was creating beautiful sort of gypsy rock and roll style clothing, selling it in my boutique in New York and also wholesaling. And so that was an adventure. And all the while still sort of dancing, taking dance classes. I started off in Russian ballet. Yes, I noticed that actually on your bio, yes. and uh, I actually for a few years uh, studied uh, Russian ballet as well. Did you? Yeah, as an adult learner, oh, it was great. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so I studied with my mother, <clears throat> my mother's teacher. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead, take a sip of water. Um, yes, yeah, so <clears throat> I left dance, well, I, less, I left. Uh, Russian ballet as a, a late teen and then from there just I mean just always felt as a dance I felt myself as a dancer no matter what I did when people ask me what I who I was I would say I'm a dancer at heart in my soul I'm a dancer no matter what I do that um, that archetype that uh, essence has stayed with me always and have you danced many different forms of yeah, dance I've explored too. all kinds of different right. dance and I always come back to the sense of, um, I think what I love most about dance and what I do now with dance is the sense of freedom and authenticity that your last um, guest spoke about. Um, it allows me to drop into myself and discover who I am in the moment uh, without having to talk, which I really appreciate um, just the, the joy of movement and being true to myself. So freestyle dance is my all-time favorite style where I, there's no choreography, nobody's telling me how to move. I've got music on and I'm just responding to the music or maybe no music. Maybe I'm dancing to the ocean. Maybe I'm dancing to drums. Maybe I'm dancing to Michael Jackson. Um, it doesn't matter. The fact that I'm moving means I'm alive and it's also, it has become my way of praying and um, releasing, finding my own healing through that. Now, Erica, we're going to talk more about, I know you're the co-founder of Dance Our Way Home, and we'll speak more about that uh, after the break. Um, but before we take a break, I've got my Good to Know Minute, and that's uh, your success tip. And I know, Erica, you've got a great one, so jump right in there. Oh, um, I think uh, it's really important to find the balance of the masculine and feminine essence inside. In other words, um, having the masculine drive, direction, organizational skills, focus, purpose is really important, but also honoring the feminine, which is the more fluid, intuitive, um, relational, um, nonverbal, creative, more meandering and more chaotic um, and emotional uh, world. So being able to balance that in our lives, to go from the left brain, right brain, um, I think really helps carve a beautiful path of, of many, many uh, facets. Thank you, Erica.
We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Erica Ross. So stay right there. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with uh, my guest, Erica Ross. We're talking about uh, now using dance as a form of healing. Now, during the break, we saw this lovely video of you dancing in India. Thank How you. beautiful. Thank you. That was totally spontaneous. I was at the top of the world on these beautiful boulders, and it was sunset. It was um, South India, just outside of a town called Hampi. And my friend started videotaping me, and so I had my bags, and I ended up putting my bags down, and I, and I just went into, into dance. There was chanting in the background, and I was dancing and moving and meditating to the chanting that was happening. And uh, it turned out to be a beautiful piece. Now, yeah. let's talk about uh, Dance Our Way Home. Now, this mm -hmm. is a program that uh, you co-founded in conjunction with Sheena's Place. Is that correct? Well, it, um, it originated with um, this calling that both my girlfriend Nan Kaiser and I felt um, to go to Sheena's Place and offer dance because it wasn't part of their program. And uh, just so you know, Sheena's Place is a beautiful nonprofit organization that supports people with eating disorders and body image issues. So we thought, they need dance. There was art and yoga and other beautiful expressive arts, but they had no dance. So we designed and um, named this group Dance Our Way Home specifically for Sheena's as a body image group. And um, Nan and I 
um, co-created and co-facilitated for the first three years. And, um, and through budget cuts, um, we went down to one facilitator. Nan went off to do other um, groups there, and I continued on with Dance Away Home and um, did it for 10 years. About four years ago, maybe even five years ago, um, I realized after you know such a wonderful run and experience of doing Dance Way Home at Sheena's that it was um, a powerful practice to bring out into the world. So I began to uh, rent studio space and promote it as uh, a practice beyond the walls of Sheena's Place and continued facilitating Sheena's Place as well, but offering it to women, um, to any woman that wants to be more embodied, that loves to dance, that wants to be in a non-judgmental, sacred and safe space with other women to create community and sisterhood and just be beautiful mirrors for each other and accept each other just as we are. And uh, so dance is, a, is, Dance Away Home is a freestyle dance like the dance that I love so much myself. Um, but it's infused with um, everything that I know to be true as a woman. All that I've gathered over the years as an artist and dancer and traveler. Um, so what would that be? All the things that you know as a woman? Yeah. What, so, what do you mean? Um, I mean, so the different practices that I do personally, my own spiritual beliefs, my, um, my connection with the divine feminine, um, um, the different writers that I love, like one of my favorite books is Women Who Roam With the Wolves oh, and Connection yeah. With the Wild Woman. Um, also, I have a lot of Buddhist practices that I do, the metta practice of loving kindness. Um, so it's very yogic that it's, it's body, mind, heart, and soul. I also bring in relaxation. I'm a certified hypnotherapist, so I bring in, um, always at the beginning of every session, there's a, a, a segment of where you just lie down on the floor and I take you on a guided journey. I bring in shamanic practices and energy work and sounding and art. and So that's what I mean about sort of bringing in all that I've gathered in my life, all the different experiences and um, studies and teachings from around the world I bring in east west uh, um, yogic shamanic energy work healing work and it's all the dance is the vehicle for it um, and the main the main uh, point of it but it's so much more than dance you get a lot more than just dance and what yeah. do you get then in terms of, a, is it a deeper awareness? Is it a deeper journey within mm -hmm. yourself then? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a growth yes. and empowerment for women beyond just staying physically fit and... Um, yes, because there is such a strong spiritual root to it. Right. Um, it's offering women space to unfold on their own terms. They go at their own pace in their own way, and it's one of the one of the few places where you can attend and just all you have to do is show up and be present with yourself and follow your own impulse, your own instinct. I guide you, and I lead you into different practices and different exercises. But really, it's up to you to discover what it is that you need. So it's an opportunity to practice listening and just being with yourself and, and allowing emotion to come. The Dance Away Home is structured um, as a spiral path. So you start with the relaxation and then you drop into yourself and you do your own personal dance. And that's when you get to just come home to yourself and discover who you are today. Regardless of what's happening in the outside world, it's not about anyone else or looking a certain way or being a certain way. It's just saying, okay, here I am. How do my hands want to move? What story wants to come through me now? Am I tired? Am I excited? Am I nervous? Uh, am, I, am I worried? And just being in the dance. And it's, the music starts very softly and gently. And then we move into partnering. So now you're coming out into the world. The partnering then becomes more group. So the personal then becomes the collective, which is what we do in the world. We wake up in the morning, we're, we're alone, we go out in the world, we have experiences, and then the journey comes, spirals back to self. 
Um, and the music has uh, a wave to it. It starts slowly and it builds and it builds. There's always a, a point where we do some releasing and we use our voices as well. And then we drop back down into more sort of prayerful, uh, still point. And then we come together in circle. We start in circle, we end in circle. And um, it's an opportunity for women to fall in love with themselves and really um, see themselves as beautiful, magnificent, precious, perfect, just as they are, no matter what size, age, shape, color, background, it doesn't matter. But you, and you know, I look at you and I think, wow, you look healthy and fit. Um, and you're in your 50s. I mean, you're a great role model for women out there. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going to be 57 this year, and it just feels unreal to me. Um, and I, you know, one of, the, one of the comments I get all the time is people see my light, they see my shine. And, and um, I really do think that doing this dance work and um, allowing myself to drop in and and also do the releasing because I can hold a lot of tension like most of us do we all have stress we have stressors in our lives and so for me I can clean myself through dance I can shake it out I can sound it out I can also really um, drop into my own uh, personal experience and feel really blessed and grateful that um, that I have this in my life. So this is why I want to share it. I want to share the light. I want to um, invite other women to shine and blossom with me. Now, do you think um, in our society here in, in the Western world, in particular in North America, do you think we think too much? I mean, you experience some magical moments in, in India, and you've mm -hmm. really managed to bring your light forth through your, through your body, through your work. Um, in dance, uh, do we think too much? Do we, pu do we absolutely, push too much? Do absolutely. We do too much? I mean, we need our mind. We need our mind to focus and organize ourselves. But um, we're missing out on a whole other realm and a whole other world that's going on, which is what's happening in our body and in our soul and in our heart. And I know that uh, from on a real personal level, I know that the experiences that we have in our life, the stories that it comes with our living, they get lodged in our body. We, trauma gets stuck in our body, fear gets stuck in our body, and I feel that a lot of the pain that we experience is the stuckness, and it's not, um, when we're not in flow, when we're not being fluid and allowing our emotions to, to arise and be experienced and let go, then we get locked. And, um, and staying in our head also can either spiral us out, you know, we can just go around and around in circles in our mind, thinking, 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 worrying, worrying, whatever that is. Um, we miss the opportunity of discovering what the body wisdom is and where the heart and soul wants to lead us. So, yeah. You know, I, <laughs> I have uh, actually one last question. Um, in your definition of success, what does success mean to you? I think I'm redefining that that question. I've been I've been asking myself and talking to friends about this for a while, actually, because I think that um, the way we've been raised in our in a patriarchal culture, um, we have defined success in a masculine way. We've defined success as a linear path with goals and that if we achieve this goal, if we just set a course, achieve that goal, we are successful. Or if we make a certain amount of money, we're successful. And I'm redefining this. I think that it causes a lot of pain as, um, to, to someone that is artistic and creative or to the feminine that um, really relishes and thrives in a more chaotic, meandering environment. Um, for me, success is more about you know, do we have love in our life? Are we living a passionate life? Are, what are our relationships like? Um, are we following our bliss? Are we paying attention? Um, are we engaged in having a dialogue with the world that is, that is deeply personal? Those kinds of things, I think, are success. Mm -hmm. Erica Ross, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your stories and your journey. 
Uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, and actually, before we go, uh, I meant to ask you one last question. You have an event coming up or uh, something that you wanted to promote? Yes, yes, yes. In the fall, I am um, offering for the second time um, facilitator certification training. So if anybody wants to learn how to facilitate this practice, this beautiful, beautiful practice, Dance Our Way Home, um, contact me. I'm doing a three-month program. It's beautiful. It's an opportunity to discover who you are in the process of becoming a feminine leader and offering healing to other women. And where would we find information about you on the web? At danceourwayhome.com. Okay. Thanks so much, Erica. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, for more information about upcoming shows or to contact me, visit the website at extraordinarywomentv.com. Special thanks to my friends and family for your support. Uh, Jennifer Wu here, who uh, is part of my team. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Um, and of course, to the folks at that channel. Well, if you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories have inspired you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. And I will see you soon.